Hi there, welcome. I'm Beth, and this week I'm joining in on a Halloween collaboration hosted by Marna of Dolls Rescued. She's invited everyone to join in on an open collaboration called Tiny Witch. The idea is to show off your smallest dolls dressed as a witch. I've decided to transform one of my petite Blythe dolls, and I'm actually going to be customising a genuine stock doll. She's all gold in one from 2003 and was one of the last keychain type petite Blythe dolls. They had non-moving eyes, arms and legs. Now, it might upset some people that I'm customising a genuine doll, but this one has actually already been customised. I bought this girl bundled along with another genuine stock petite doll from eBay. There was no information about who had customised it, unfortunately, but she's quite nicely done. I mean absolutely no disrespect to whoever customised her before, but a couple of things have always bothered me about her. Her eyes were changed and replaced with some sort of clay, and the whites of her eyes are all lumpy and cracked. She also has quite a few dark splotches and stains on her face too, which don't seem like they were intentional to me. So although it may seem controversial to re-customise a doll, I believe you should be allowed to make alterations to your own dolls. I don't plan to sell her on, so I just want to try to update her look for my own enjoyment. So with all that said, let's get her opened and disassembled. I'm very curious to see what the inside of this keychain body is like. The older Blythe dolls were usually glued closed, which makes them very difficult to open for the first time. I can see the scalp had to be cut away from the back of the head, and that there are numerous dents and pry marks all around the whole head. It's very different to what I expected. Of course, there was no movable eye mechanism inside, but there's some sort of eye holder in there. The front face plate was never separated from the scalp, so I'll leave that as is. I'll just have to cover up the hair when I come to spraying the face. I push on her eyes gently and they pop out quite easily. The eyelashes were glued directly to the top of this plastic eye holder. The whites of the eyes appear to be made from simple air dry clay. It's hard to pick up on camera, but they're quite rough and cracked. I'm able to pry them off easily and will try to clean off the residue. Next, I'm going to use a melamine sponge or magic eraser, as well as some very high grit sandpaper to gently remove the face up. Just as if I was preparing an AliExpress Blythe for customization, it's necessary to remove the existing spray sealant to get a fresh blank canvas. To reduce the particles in the air, I sprayed the sponge sandpaper and the doll's face with water. I also wear a dust mask. Some parts of her face are more difficult to remove the paint from, so I use my carving tools and a curved scalpel to scrape away the paint as gently as possible. I'm not trying to change the existing face sculpt if possible. And there we go. She's ready to be washed down with soapy water and will soon be ready for a fresh face and outfit. I wasn't able to get all the clay off this eyepiece, but we'll keep it safe anyway in case of future eye changes. As you can see, the keychain body is very simple, and again, it's very hard to see on camera, but there are some existing stains on the body too. And here's her face, all cleaned up. I can still see a little discoloration in the plastic, I tried my best to smooth out and sand down all the pry marks around the edges. She has a very cute little face. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the way she had been sculpted. I'll go give her a scrub, let her dry thoroughly, and then we'll give her face a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant Spray. 
I'm going to start this face up with my trusty watercolour pencils and go straight into sketching out where I want her eyebrows to be. I've got absolutely no plan going into this customization, and I'm going purely on vibes. <laughs> I'm going to let the position of her eyebrows dictate her expression. I soften them out with a tiny brush and start adding more detail around the eyes, a little eyeliner and the hint of an upper eye crease. I start off softly with a light brown pencil before going in bolder with a black pencil. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more top quality and definitely in focus scenes like this. I use small soft brushes to gradually build up layers of pastel colour, warming up her cheeks and lips. I build up a few layers of colour to add more saturation and eventually add some water transfer decals to the back of her head as well. I love autumn and decided to add lots of colourful leaves to remind me of the season which I worked on her. While I wait for her last coats of MSC to cure, I look out my completely normal collection of tiny eyeballs. This is definitely something that everybody has. I made all these many, many years ago now using polymer clay, paint and liquid Sculpey for the clear domes. I'm going to look through some of these and see if any will be suitable for her. Here she is again after her final sealant spray, ready to try out some new eyeballs. I also found these ones. There are some decent looking ones actually, and I might even use a pair with a black surround. I'm going to give her some eyelashes that I'll trim right down and glue directly to the upper opening of her eyes. I'd rather they stay attached to the head and the eyes are deep enough to accommodate them. Before I unveil her new eyes, let's put together her outfit. I kind of want her to stay as a little witch character, and I have rather a lot of petite blithes now, so I don't mind if she stays in the same outfit too. I'm probably going to have to wrap some parts of her outfit around her and stitch them on in situ. I'm able to make her a tiny pair of orange tights, and I stitch up some simple arm tubes I make them intentionally oversized so they will hang off the ends of her hands. I've got some of this slightly stretchy, very cheap looking Halloween themed fabric, which I try to improvise a sleeveless body out of. I managed to get it over her fixed position arms, but I'm not sure I like it. I know I definitely want to use some of this shot silk for her dress. I bought it recently in Edinburgh, and I love that it has two different colours of thread running through it. I take a simple rectangle and gather the waistline with two parallel rows of hand stitches. I decide I definitely don't like the shiny black top and dispose of it accordingly. I think I'll do a kind of crossover bodice and will bring the gathered skirt up over it once it's in place. I really like the stripy long sleeves, and I love the purple and orange colours too. I'll add some more details to her outfit, but for now we'll put together a simple felt witch's hat. 
I gather up one side of the hat to scrunch it towards the side. I'll also add some more details to this. Here we have a pair of LOL doll shoes. I picked them up loose in a charity shop and wondered if they might fit a petite Blythe and if they could be repainted. This seems like the perfect time to try it, so I'll give these little shoes a makeover too. I paint them black, grey and white and carefully draw teeny tiny stripes onto the socks. I then coat them in Mod Podge which should prevent them from sticking to each other and having the paint flake off. The Mod Podge did slightly muddy my stripes. Let's get them on my tiny witch. What do you think of her? Do you like the extra finishing touches I added to her outfit and hat? I think she looks like a perfectly precious little witch. And the shoes even fit perfectly too. I think they look really adorable and help to balance out her proportions. They're fitted snugly enough that they shouldn't drop off easily either. Oh, I shouldn't have said drop. Well, I'm really delighted with how her new look turned out. Again, I mean no disrespect to her previous face-up, but I'm very happy to have her looking brighter and more fresh-faced. Which version did you prefer? Oh, and her eyes? I couldn't decide between the green and the black purple, so let's have a little of both. There are tiny stars and sparkles inside if you can make them out. Finally, let's have a comparison of how she started out originally versus now. I'm really looking forward to seeing lots of tiny witches this week. Leave me a comment below if you joined in on this collaboration with Marna from Dolls Rescued. A big shout out to all my supporters over on Patreon. I've just updated my commissions to accept requests from people who already have their own doll that they want to send me for customising. And I will also consider customising dolls other than Blythe too. You'll need to be a member of the custom doll tier to access the customization form, but there are public posts which explain the process before you sign up. Link in the description to Patreon if you're interested. Thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that I didn't upset you by altering a previously commissioned stock doll. I can honestly say I feel so much more attached to her now and that she's an absolute delight to lock eyes with in the studio. I'd love to know what you thought of this week's video in a comment below and would appreciate if you would leave a like as well. Marna has another Halloween themed open collaboration next week for our taller dolls called Tall Witch. So watch out for that. Take care of each other, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!